All right, so today I'm going to go over what I used to pass CompTIA Security Plus on my first attempt. Now, I took the exam at the end of June of 2020. I studied for approximately three and a half weeks before I took the exam. So let's head over. I'm going to do what I always do, which is I head over to CompTIA's site and grab the objectives. And if you look here, you're going to notice that there's two of them. The 601 isn't out yet. I believe it's going to be released in October of 2020. And I want to go over um, why I grabbed the objectives. I've talked about it in previous videos. But I grabbed the objectives because it allows me to go over what they're expecting of me to pass the exam. And so I can look at parts where I'm... I don't have any knowledge or limited knowledge in. I take notes on that. And then that way it allows me to focus on the things that are important instead of wasting time studying things I already know. Also, um, I think it helps me during the process while I'm learning, go back and kind of look at the things I'm still weak in and I can dive down deep and figure out what I need to focus on maybe in the last few days to make sure that I pass that exam. So let's click open the 501 because that's the exam that um, is available at this time. I recommend that you download it. It's just easier to have it for later. All right, so the exam objectives, um, let's look at the details first. The number of questions, um, there can be a maximum of 90. I actually had 86 on my exam, six of which were performance-based questions, and that was the most performance-based questions on any of the CompTIA exams that I had taken. Uh, prior to my Security Plus, I had taken the A+, Network+, Plus, and Server+. Plus. Um, the length of the test is 90 minutes and I want to go back real quick about the performance base. I always like to save those to the end. They help tremendously when it comes to time management. Um, they always show up in the beginning of every CompTIA exam that I've taken and if you try to tackle those in the beginning you might get lucky and get some easy ones but you're going to find out that sometimes you're going to get ones that are super wordy with a ton of different things that you need to to do to get past that question and so the performance based questions in the beginning can be frustrating but you save them to the end where you feel confident answering those multiple choice questions I just it's just a better approach they recommend that you have two years of experience passing score is 750 and below we're gonna look at the domains which is uh, 1.0 is threats Attacks and vulnerabilities for 21%. 2.0 is technologies and tools at 22%. 3.0 is architectural and design at 15%. 4.0 is identity and access management at 16%. 5.0 is risk management at 14%. 6.0 is cryptography and EKI, which is public key infrastructure and that's at 12 percent so if you kind of look over here you look at 1.0 it's threats attacks and vulnerabilities they're going to give you scenarios in the exam and they want you to be able to analyze those scenarios and indicators and determine what type of malware is it you know is it a crypto is it a bot is it a logic bomb that a worm, a Trojan. They just want you to be able to determine it. Um, and I find those sections uh, relatively easy compared to some of the other ones. For me anyways, like I said, everybody's going to be different on that. Just focus on the things that you're weakest in. You're going to do well by doing that. 
You're going to also want to compare and contrast different types of attacks. You know, if you have uh, fishing as an a fishing attack or a spear fishing attack, whaling or a fishing attack. You're going to want to know some of the principles. Is it a scarcity type of attack or an urgency type of attack? You're going to want to explain the different type of actors and attributes for that type of actor. For example, is it a script kitty attack or a hacktivist or an insider threat? You know, you're going to want to explain different penetration testing concepts like black box or white box or gray box. You know, you're going to want to talk about the different technologies and tools. You want to be able to install and configure these tools, including hardware and software-based firewalls, routers, switches, proxies. And if you look at these, if you've taken like A+, and that's why I kind of recommend that you've taken some of these other courses or these other exams because, you know, or at least study them. Because if you, if you notice, if you've either studied or taken them, you're going to notice that, oh, wow, at A+, we were talking about firewalls. We were talking about ACL. We were talking about implicit deny. Yeah, oh, wow, and Network Plus, we were doing the same thing. So, And we were learning about VPNs and switches and routers. So doing that, I noticed with this exam that I knew about 60% of the material before I even took it. So I had to learn, what, 40% of the exam. And it, that's why it only took me three and a half weeks to, to pass it. And I know others, like I said, others have taken, you know, a couple months. Some people have done it within like two weeks. But most people take a few months to a year to study. If you uh, at least study or even pass the A+, plus, the Network+, plus, this exam becomes a lot easier. And if you just kind of scroll through, that you know these are the different objectives. Um, again, write down the areas that you're weakest in. You know they're going to want to. They're going to give you a lot of scenarios. They're going to give you troubleshooting scenarios like constantly. So if they give you a scenario to implement secure a network, and they want you to know the concept. You know, should you do DMZ? Should you do uh, honey nets? Should you do uh, intranet or extranet? They're going to want you to know the appropriate way to do it. Um, do you want to do uh, tunneling VPN site to site or remote? Um, you know, what about proxies? What about firewalls? They're going to want you to know the reasons to implement those things and how to implement. And if you've uh, watched uh, my past videos, you know, so I, even in A+, they talk about cloud and virtualization concepts. Um, they talked about it in A+, Network+, Server+. So if you've taken any of those exams or studied them, you're going to understand that what Hypervisor 1 and 2 mean. You're going to understand what the cloud deployment models are. And it's important to understand those. That I had several questions on those topics, actually. So... They're going to want you to understand the importance and explain, you know, the different controls and why you would use them. So they'll come up with scenarios, you know, should you, would lighting be the best uh, security control or would putting up a, you know, security fence or having a guard in place or an alarm or a safe. You know, what's funny is before I took CompTIA exams, I never heard of Faraday cages. They love obscure things in their exams like i don't even know anybody that even talks about those things yet they're in the exam so you want to pay attention to stuff like that biometrics is a big deal um, in this exam again just kind of scroll through look at you know the areas that you're weakest in take notes and you're going to do fine And then here we go. This is why I was kind of getting down to the acronyms. If you notice, um, at least for me, once I, I kind of knew some of these acronyms even before 
I studied any of the CompTIA exams. But as I went through the A plus and the network plus and the server plus, I learned a ton of these prior. So even though it seems like there's a lot here, if you've studied or passed the other exams, you're going to see that a lot of these kind of overlap, which makes things. All right, so the next thing I do is I go over to YouTube and I do, I search for Professor Messer because he's got such great free material. And I just bookmark his uh, training course. You can either go here and start playing it. I've just showed that in other videos. But if you look here, you can kind of click on here and save the bookmark that here. And look at he breaks it down for the domain. So nice to have that. I always go through his videos first, straight through, just to get an idea of you know the flow of it all. I take notes again. I feel like I keep saying that in all my videos, but I feel like taking notes really for me helps me retain the knowledge better than if I just, you know, if I don't take those notes. So I take notes on the areas where I'm not doing as well, and then I go back and I drill down into these videos until I get those concepts. So once I have this saved up, um, I go and I grabbed Jason Dion's practice exams. I, yeah, I do that. And then I also did his course too. Security. This course. And it does have some practice exams, but it's not enough. But the course is amazing. I went through this several times, and the first time just straight through, like I do the Professor Messer videos, taking notes, and then I drilled down back the second time through. But this really helps solidify the practice exams and simulators. He even has the simulators in there. When I was getting 90% or more, that's when I schedule my exam. So if you guys have any questions, comments, please leave them below. Smash the like icon. Um, subscribe and hit the bell notification. That way you will get um, you know, future videos because I'm going to be releasing labs and different things about networking. And um, if you have any uh, comments about what you would like to see in the future, uh, I would love to hear about those as well. And until next time.